We'll learn in this lecture how to linearize nonlinear dynamical systems. In this lecture, we want to explain how to approximate a nonlinear system x dot equals f of x to a linear system x dot equals ax. But before we explain how to linearize a system, we first need to explain why we do this. Why do we want to approximate an accurate system to a system which is not accurate? The answer is that analyzing a nonlinear system might be very difficult, but if we could approximate a nonlinear system to a linear system, we can then use linear control theory tools to analyze or even design a controller for the system. Our analysis and design are usually valid as long as the system works around the state at which we linearize the system. So linearization allows us to analyze the behavior of an equilibrium point of a nonlinear system almost in the same way that we analyze linear systems. For a nonlinear curve, there are a lot of points around which we can linearize a system. As an example, consider the nonlinear system x dot equals x squared over 2. If we linearize this system around the point x equals 1, then the linear approximation of the system is x dot equals x minus 0 0.5. But if we linearize the system around x equals minus 2, the linear approximation is x dot equals minus 2x minus 2. These two approximations are very different. So the question is, which one should we use? Around which of these points should we linearize a system? The answer is that we should linearize a system around the points which are more important to us, as obviously, there is generally no single linear approximation that can approximate a nonlinear system for all values. We learned in the previous videos that equilibrium points are important points for nonlinear systems, and that we are interested to study the behavior of a nonlinear system around its equilibrium points. Remember from the lecture on phase portrait that we use the stability definition and phase portrait and vector field diagram to study the stability of equilibrium points of the pendulum system with friction. It would be much easier if we could approximate this system around its equilibrium points and then simply use linear control theory. This is what we are planning to do in this and the next video. Consider a nonlinear system x dot equals f of x. The Taylor series expansion of f of x around the equilibrium point x e is x dot equals f of x e plus the partial of f with respect to x at x e times x minus x e plus the higher order terms which are all functions of x minus x e. For example, if x is a scalar, then the higher order terms include x minus x e squared, x minus x e cubed, and so on. So if, for example, x e is 0 and x is between minus 0.1 and 0.1, then x minus x e is between minus 0.1 and 0.1. The term x minus x e squared is between 0 and 0 0.01, which is much smaller than the absolute value of x minus x e. Similarly, x minus x e cubed is between minus 0 0.001 and 0 0.001 and is certainly a negligible term as long as x is between minus 0.1 and 0.1. So we can approximate the nonlinear system by this first order system. We can further simplify this equation. Since we approximated the system around an equilibrium point, the first term on the right hand side is zero according to the definition of an equilibrium. So the approximated system around the equilibrium point x e is x dot equals the partial of f with respect to x at x e times x minus x e. This system can also be written in another coordinate system by applying the change of variable z equals x minus x e. Let's now see an example. We are given a second order nonlinear system and are asked to linearize the system around the origin. We've just learned that the linear approximation of the system around an equilibrium is in this form. But in this example, f is a vector and takes in a vector. 
So f is actually two functions, f1 and f2, that both take in the vector x. In other words, f is a function that takes in two variables, x1 and x2, and outputs two variables, f1 and f2. So to take the derivative of f with respect to x, there are actually four derivatives that we should calculate. The derivatives are expressed as a matrix, which is called the Jacobian matrix. The entries in the first row of the Jacobian matrix are the partial of the first function, which is f1, with respect to the first variable, which is x1, and the partial of f1 with respect to the second variable, which is x2. Similarly, the second row is the partial of the second function, which is f2, with respect to the first variable x1, and the partial of f2 with respect to the second variable x2. We can calculate all the derivatives and obtain the Jacobian matrix in this form. Then we need to evaluate this matrix at the origin, which means we should substitute x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 0 in this matrix. So the linearized system is in this form, which can also be written as two equations, x1 dot equals x2 and x2 dot equals minus x1 minus x2. In the second example, we want to linearize the pendulum model around its equilibrium points. As explained in the previous lectures, the state equations are in this form, where x1 is theta and x2 is theta dot. The equilibrium points are also x1 equals n pi, where n is an integer, and x2 equals 0. f and x are both 2D vectors, and therefore the partial of f with respect to x is a 2 by 2 Jacobian matrix. We can calculate each of these derivatives and obtain this matrix. As explained in the equilibrium point video, the pendulum has infinite number of isolated equilibrium points. A link to this video is provided at the top right corner of the screen. We are just going to calculate the linearized system at two equilibrium points, the origin corresponding to the case where the bob is hanging down, and the point x1 equals pi and x2 equals 0, corresponding to the position where the bob is at its utmost position. For the first case, the linear system is in this form, and in the second case, it's in this form. You can now calculate the linearized system at any other equilibrium point that you want. We've learned in this video how to linearize a nonlinear system around an equilibrium point. In the next video, we will explain the relation between the stability of the equilibrium point of a nonlinear system and the stability of the linearized system. It's an interesting and a powerful fact that a linear approximation of a system around an equilibrium point can be used to study the behavior of a nonlinear system around the equilibrium points.